I'm really excited to present this short overview of the Sound Devices 302 Compact Production Mixer. It's the most compact and cost-effective professional audio mixer in its class. Priced at $1,300, it's loaded with most of the features found on its big brother, the 552, which sells for about $2,900. It includes an onboard audio recorder. First, let's go over the basic controls and features on the front panel. First, you have the faders. They are the primary control for adjusting the input level during operation. Next, each channel has a peak LED and a limiter LED. Peak illuminates when the channel level is approaching the clipping point. Limiter LEDs light up when the channel limiter is reducing the gain to prevent overload. Gain or trim. This is the coarse input gain control. It sets the input level so that the fader can be set at the unity or 12 o'clock position before recording. You have a polarity reverse switch on channel 2. It's used in a variety of situations when you have linked 1 and 2 for stereo recording. I'll cover stereo recording in my next video. Limiter switch. This activates both the input and output limiters. When it's in the on position, it controls each channel separately. When set to link, it cuts down both channels of a stereo link when either channel goes too high. This is the output meter. It's a sunlight viewable 20 segment LED meter. I can describe it in one word. Awesome. We'll cover its features a little later. Next is the slate mic tone switch. The left position is momentary. When pushed, it activates an onboard mic so the sound operator can label the take or make verbal notes about the shot. The right position is used to set up your recorder levels. When engaged, it shuts down any connected mics and sends a 0 dB tone to your recorder or camera. Just go to whatever device you're using and adjust its trim and faders to show 0 dB on the meters. At that point, your mixer and recorder levels will be in sync. Whatever level you see on your mixer will be the same on your recorder or camera. The pan switch assigns the input channel to the output bus. This is basic to all mixers. You tell each mic to go left, right, or both. Each channel has a high pass filter. It's used to reduce excessive low frequencies by 12 dB under 80 Hz, or you can select 160 Hz in noisier conditions. The center position is off. Here's your stereo link LED. It indicates that inputs 1 and 2 are linked as a stereo pair. I'll cover stereo linking in another movie, but for now just remember that when this LED is lit, the fader, trim, and pan switch on channels 1 and 2 work differently than normal. Next is the meter brightness control. Wow, you can see the meter in bright sunlight if you want to. What a great idea. You can choose among four levels of brightness depending on your shooting environment. Testing 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. The meter ballistics is very cool too. It toggles among visual representations that include peak only, 1, 2, 3, 4, combo peak VU, 1, 2, 3, 4, VU only, 1, 2, 3, 4, and peak hold VU, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now for the headphone switch. This thing is deep, so I'm going to take a minute to describe the many ways you can monitor your audio before and during a shoot. You can select channel 1, 2, or 3 mic in solo, which picks up post limiter and filter, so you can toggle those in or out and hear the difference. It is pre-fader, meaning the fader has no effect. The sound you hear equals the fader at unity or 12 o'clock. Use this monitor selection to set the gain on incoming mics and other devices. All mono selections are heard in both sides of the headphone. The next two positions are the left output bus and the right output bus. These give you the processed sound going to your recorder on the left and right XLR outputs. You have mono, which sums the left and right output buses. Use this to determine if your stereo mix will phase out when combined to mono. Next is Stereo Master. It combines the left and right bus as stereo. You hear the stereo mix whether it is unlinked mono or linked XY or MS stereo. There's more. RTN Return gives you the stereo mix coming back from your camera or a recorder. Of course, you need to have wired the device to the mixer return input. You can buy a dual XLR cable snake that includes a stereo 3.5 line. The better ones have a quick release for use at the camera end. The last three positions help you record MS Stereo for mixing in post. This is where you have not linked channels 1 and 2 for MS Stereo. You just have channel 1, which is the mid mic going to the left bus, and channel 2, which is your figure 8 side mic going to the right bus. MMS monitors the mono signal, or the left channel, of an MS Stereo signal. 
STMS, processes the mono left and right channels as MS stereo for your ears only in the headset. This gives you an idea of what the MS stereo will sound like when you have manually built the mix down in post. Return MS does the same thing using the return input from your camera or recorder. You have headphone volume. That's pretty obvious. This is the battery check button. It displays the internal or the external battery levels on the output monitor. Green is good. Finally, here's your power switch and LED. The LED flashes when you are running out of juice on either internal or external battery. Next, we'll look at the input panel descriptions. You have three transformer balance XLR inputs. They are full-featured microphone preamps that can accept very low-level dynamic mic inputs all the way up to hot line level signals. Transformers provide galvanic isolation from the driving source. There is no direct electrical connection. The signal is balanced magnetically. These mic preamps are absolutely professional level, robust, and rugged for field use in all conditions. Each channel has a mic line switch. With a total of up to 75 dB of gain, mic level has 40 dB more gain than line level. It is used to preamp the very weak signal coming in from most microphones. Use line level to input high output devices like wireless mic receivers or maybe an auxiliary feed at an event. Don't forget to turn off the phantom power on that channel if your device doesn't need it. Here's your mic power type selection. You can choose between phantom and the old style T-Power. You probably don't have a mic that uses T-Power. DYN Dynamic turns off the mic powering. Along with that is the phantom voltage selection. Select 48 or 12 volt power board wide. That means you cannot choose 48 or 12 volt power on different channels. You have to choose one or the other for all mics input to the mixer. Finally, you have a regular 3.5 millimeter TRS stereo headphone output. It can handle a wide range of consumer and professional headphones from 8 to 2000 ohms. Here's the output panel. First, you have left and right balanced XLR master outputs. The output bus can be attenuated in case your recording device requires less than line level output. This may be the case if you're outputting to a consumer type camera. This is your output attenuation LED. When lit, it reminds you that your output connectors have been set for a level lower than a factory default line level. Internal settings are accomplished by starting the mixer while holding down the PK VU button. This opens a progression of settings and choices that are explained on a card that accompanies the mixer. Here's your battery tube. It is very convenient for changing batteries on the go, especially if you carry your mixer in a sound bag. It holds three AA alkaline batteries. This would be your return channel input. It is unbalanced stereo 3.5 millimeter. As I mentioned earlier, you can run the headphone output from your camera or recorder back into the mixer for monitoring on your headset. Alternately, you can set it up as mixer inputs 4 and 5 for the rare situation in which you need more than three channel inputs. And here are the left and right return channel level controls. And of course, the channel 4 5 activation LED. When lit, it reminds you that you have set 4 and 5 as channels rather than to your headset as a return monitor. Here's your mix-in, which you could use to link the output from another 302 or other device directly to your master bus. This would be a tape-out, mix-out, unbalanced stereo output. Use this to output to another 302 or other device. And last, your external DC input. The mixer accepts and can adjust to voltages from 5 to 18 volts DC. It uses a high rose 4-pin locking connector. You can use this to hook directly to a 12-volt belt pack for a worry-free power all day. I hope this video has been helpful in explaining the features found on this diminutive yet fully professional field audio mixer. Thanks for watching, and I hope you come back soon for more tips and tricks on making movies for the internet.